by default, Orbiter 2010 doesn't have any bases on the uh, various moons throughout the solar system. So I spent a bunch of time last night putting bases on all the different moons around uh, Jupiter and all the moons around Saturn. So I thought I'd show this off really quick. I think it's pretty cool if we go out to a thousand time warp. Uh, we're on Io currently, and I didn't actually know this, but basically all the moons, all like almost all of the moons, are almost tidally locked to their parent planet. There's only a couple of exceptions to that. But here at Io, you can see that uh, as we warp time forward at a thousand, you know, Jupiter just continues to spin. Now the sun's coming up here at Io. And if we got to, got to maybe 10,000, know, you can just see that uh, we're going around. And now the sun is setting. And if we go to the next planet, uh, the next one out from Io, I believe is Europa. And now you can actually see Io down there. That's where we just were. And it's interesting, too, that Io, or, or rather, yeah, Europa. Europa is also tidally locked. So as we warp time forward, even at 10,000, you can see that Jupiter never leaves the uh, perspective from where we are here at this base that I set up on, on the surface. And let's go to the next planet or rather the next moon. So the next moon is, what is it, uh, Ganymede. And from this perspective, the uh, Jupiter is out here, and then you can see Io in Europa there. And again, it's tidally locked, so as we warp time forward, we have a beautiful view of the of Jupiter and its, and its uh, two inner moons just from this base here. And there's one last moon that comes with Orbiter 2010 by default. I think Jupiter actually has like, I don't even know, 20, 30, 40 moons. But for some reason in Orbiter 2010, it only has four. So we'll go to the last moon. And this is Callisto. Yeah, Callisto. And it too is uh, tidally locked. So as we warp time forward, even at uh, 10,000 or 100,000 or whatever, you see Jupiter spinning there, and you can see its moons going around, which is pretty cool. Now, I, I did notice that in some cases there are, um, in some cases, if you warp time forward by like a thousand years, <laughs> or two thousand years, or ten thousand years in some cases, then the, the planet will actually finally set. But I think that all the moons at Jupiter are like completely tidally locked. I don't I don't know that it ever sets. But even so, you know, it, it'll it'll be there on the horizon for the next hundred years or five hundred years or a thousand years or something like that. So anyway, I just thought that was pretty cool and uh thought you guys might like looking at the different views there between Io, Europa, Ganymede, which I think this is probably my favorite one because it has a just the view is a little cooler, and you can see two moons on the inner track there. And then finally, Callisto is the last one, which gets out far enough that uh, it's it's cool, but we're now far enough out that the texture kind of start ha starts having some angularity to it, and I don't really like that. So the inner ones look a lot better, a lot smoother looking, and a lot prettier. Well, that's it.